We begin the first quarter at VFL Park. Umpire Michael Ball comes in to bounce the ball. The Saints in South Fremantle. And the first free kick of the game has already been paid. It's going to Big Borthwick. Borthwick from centre field. And a good mark taken at centre half back by Elphinstone. And he's gone for a hand pass. The Saints come out of defence. Ball up towards the right half back flank. And picked up out there for the Saints by Cronin. Up to right half forward. Cowie. He's gone for a short pass. He was only some uh, 35 metres out from goal. Trying to find Lockett but couldn't do so. Now a chance for Keel. A snapshot at goal. Is off target by the Little St Kilda Rover. And it goes over the boundary line. And we'll see a throw in. Cowie was selected at uh, centre half back, Peter. But he and Alphonson have swapped positions. Alphonson going to that position. Burns into the centre. Robert right. was rather interested to see that uh, Muir had two players on him at the start of the game. Yes, uh, St Kilda lining up with uh, Smith. Not on the forward line, but across the half back line. All right, South Fremantle now through uh, Vasoli it was. Eventually the ball booted up towards uh, right half forward for the Saints. Picked up by Burns. A long kick by Burns up towards full forward. Here's a chance for a score. Up the handball is uh, astray. Muir couldn't get there before the ball was over the line and out of bounds from Smith. And again, we'll see a boundary throw in in the right forward pocket. Some one and a half minutes gone, opening term. Pretty crowded sort of a throw in. Borthwick and Cowie. Vasoli gets dispossessed pretty quickly and we will see a ball up which is appropriate especially looking at the umpire who is Michael Ball must be about uh, 26 players around that bounce Smith trying to burrow his way through the pack eventually a long hand ball comes out from uh, Cornell picked up by Hardy back towards halfback length Winbanks doing battle there he's a uh, one of his teammates actually runs into trouble that's Mace and he's been penalized for holding the ball and the the, uh, the free kick will go to Vasoli at left half back flank Vasoli to take that free kick at half back for uh, South Fremantle in which the is on top of the league ladder in West Australia oh, there's Vagona getting up very high and a hand pass coming back from Borthwick and the ball finally driven up there by Martin for South Fremantle there's a good mark and the mark taken there by Dorotic Dorotic goes for the goals, it's a long kick, it's a good kick too and it's a goal. Yes, the first goal of the match to South Fremantle, a beautiful bit of play that time, Robert. Yes, Dorotic certainly looked a good player the way he went about that one, Lou. Uh, Vagona high up in the air, almost took the mark and then Borthwick got the hand pass out to Martin. And we watch now as Dorotic now finding nobody on the mark, steadies and the long left foot kick. There's no mistake about that, a nice piece of shepherding by Craig Edwards and a good goal. We must compliment the uh, West Australian team, South Fremantle, uh, with the numbers or the names on the uh, back of the Guernseys. I think it's a, a fantastic idea. There's Smith for uh, a St Kilda over to Winbanks, knocked out by Borthwick again. Tomei goes down. Bit of a scrimmage developing out there on that wing position, but the umpires found a free kick, and it'll go to Lynch out there on the centre wing position for South Fremantle. And one thing about this South Fremantle side, so I think they'll have a bit of a go tonight too because of their coach. There's Vagona knocking the ball over and finally it's picked up now and driven up there by uh, Gorilla. Uh, Gor I knew I'd say that. Gorilla <laughs> <laughs> sits, Lou. Gorilla sits. I knew I'd say that. I've been practicing all night. The ball finally coming back there towards that wing position and there's the chance now for the uh, South Fremantle side to go back into a tank through for Soli over to Hardy. A long kick up towards the full forward position. Flying high, there's grabbed off the pack by Vagana, a snap at goal, that's the second one That's coming a goal. Up. It's a goal. Another goal, and so they're two goals, 12 points to St Kilda yet to score, and they're off to a great start. There's Benny Vagana, uh, not unlike uh, Morris Rioli in the way he moves, and uh, we see the left foot snap, and uh, the bounce going the right way, and uh, Benny Vagana, as we've uh, already seen, there's Morris Rioli, you can see the, the similarity on shore, and... Uh, Vagona, a very neat footballer. Two goals to South Fremantle, and Kilda hit to score in the Sterling Cup match from VFL Park. Nobody gets a tap out from the bounce. Going through is Morwood. Well tackled, too high though, says the umpire. And Morwood will take the free kick for St Kilda and assisted by a 15 metre penalty against Vasoli. Now it's play on. Morwood does just that. A long kick up towards half forward. Barrett couldn't take the mark. Mace does. Plays on. A shot at goal. Should be the Saints' first score. And it is one behind. 
So the difference now 11 points at VFL Park. St Kilda one behind, South Fremantle two goals. Those goals kicked by Vagona and Dorotic. As we wait the ball to come back into play from Carter. What oh, beautiful kick too from Carter. Winbanks couldn't take the mark, a chance for Keel. Now they're doing a little bit better, St Kilda. Lining them up is Smith. And that looks pretty good, St Kilda's first goal. And that came up at the five and a half minute mark of the first quarter. It was great play there by the big fellow Cowie. A very quick hand pass. Keel and Cowie combining to get the ball onto uh, Terry Smith. And a very quick, quick piece of play. There on replay, we saw the hand pass. And uh, Cowie, very active for a big man. 1-1-7 to two straight goals, 12 points. The scoreboard at VFL Park. Number 41 is Borthwick. And his opponent, the former Swans Ruckman, David Winbacks, won by Borthwick. Chance for Keel to Narkel. Almost went the wrong way. He's got plenty of opposition. Hardy, long hand pass over to Dorotic at half forward. He could score from there. Can he make it two? That's a pretty good shot at goal. And he's put it through for one behind. Just miss by about uh, half a metre, I think. So 2-1 to 1-1. One, one. The scoreboard in the Sterling Cup. We've been playing six and a half minutes of the opening term. It looks a likely cult. There's a nice pass out there to Morwood. Morwood takes the ball around the wing position. Looking there for Mace. Takes the mark out in that position. Drives the ball across the centre half forward. Cowie's the ball is knocked away by Henwood. Finally it's picked up by Muir. Muir goes for a pass out wide. Looking there for Lockett. Got his hands but couldn't hold the mark. And we see Carter onto his back there, but Carter finally forces the ball over the line for South Fremount. So it's out of bounds on uh, St Kilda's half forward line, about uh, 50 metres around from their goal. At the moment, St Kilda are one goal, one seven points to South Fremantle, two goals, one thirteen. Knocked out by the big fella Borthwick again, picked up by uh, Vasoli, the ball driven back there and a mark to Winbanks, a quick hand pass to Burns, in plenty of trouble, grabbed by Hardy, couldn't get a hand pass out. And there'll be a free kick there to Matera. Matera's kick is back there towards the wink position. And there's a good mark to Dorotic again. He looks a likely cult, this fella, Bob. Yes, he was under real pressure when he took that one. He uh, really put his teammate under pressure, though. Gets it back and a long hand pass to Hardy. Hardy's kick is falls short back there towards centre half forward. A chance now uh, for the ball to be driven away by St Kilda. That time it's through Hodges. The ball back towards centre half forward. A nice pick up by Smith over to Faschini. Faschini dodges. Goes for a pass, looking for Mew, he's got the mark. Mew kicked seven goals in the reserve on Saturday. Mew is off the mark, he could have gone back for a kick, but it's a short pass coming over to Bashini. that's another goal. So St Kilda, two goals, one 13 points, and scores a dead level just on the eight-minute mark of this first quarter, so it looks as though it's going to be a pretty close game, Bob. Well, St Kilda really hitting back now and starting to hit their straps. I thought Muir had made a mistake playing on. He put himself under pressure when he was within kicking distance. But when you finish it off with a nice hand pass and the goal, then, sure enough, a great piece of play. Well, we're back in the centre now. And we're waiting for the big fella to go for the knock now. Borthwick, he's much bigger than Winbanks. And the umpire's found a free kick against Borthwick. It'll go to Winbanks at centre field. Winbanks, ex-Swan uh, player, drops the ball short of centre-half off the full forward position. Cowie couldn't hold the mark. It's finally picked up at that time uh, by uh, Cornell. Cornell's kick is out towards the uh, half-back flank position. And there's a mark going out there to uh, Bagone, who's come well down from that half-forward line. In front is Dorotic again. He's only marked that one out there. He's giving Elphiston a bit of uh, trouble there at the moment. And the ball out of bounds. Well, it's up towards the uh, South Fremantle free uh, half forward on about 75 metres out from their goal. Borthwick got the tap down again. There's a chance for the ball to be passed back by Matera. Finally driven up there towards that uh, uh, Bagona at half forward. Another short pass. It's a beauty and a mark taken here by Gillies. And Gillies would only be about, uh, let me see, no more than uh, 35 to 40 metres out directly in front. And a chance to put uh, South Fremantle's third goal on the ball. There's the kick. Well, won't quite make the distance, but it's a chance for a goal. No, well picked up that time by Hodges, and the ball finally forced through for one point. So the score now, two goals, 2-14, to St Kilda, two goals, 1-13. Bulldogs lead by one point. We've been playing nearly ten minutes in the opening term, a pretty high standard game too, but ideal conditions. At the back, Burns can't complete the mark. 
They're going to waiting for the crumbs. They don't come his way. And umpire Tony Bryant has decided on a bounce as Hardy hands the ball back to him. Left half forward for South Fremantle. Going up is Dorotich. Knocks it over the head of Narkel. Basoli is there. Takes the hand pass well back to Borthwick, but he's pinned. Picked up by Burns. Over to Lane. Lane at right centre wing. Short kick. Up towards centre half forward. The umpire has found a free kick for a push in the back. It's going south from Mantle's way. Here to Barrett, Pete. Barrett, the interstate back pocket player, from centre half back. Up to half forward. Elphinstone is there. Doesn't get a favourable bounce. Now he's shepherded well. Should be able to pick it up okay. Gets it out to Smith. Morewood. Up to centre wing. Big Borthwick is there. And Mace uh, would have almost given away a 15 metre penalty. Perhaps lucky not to. Borthwick goes for the hand pass. South Fremantle up towards half four. Dorotic again, but couldn't take this mark. And kill the player Lane getting legged, and he'll take the free kick at centre half back. Straight down the centre of the ground. Looking for Muir. Can't find him. Narkel roves it well. Almost in the back against Borthwick, who tries to go for a hand pass and picked up by Matera. A lovely balk to get around Terry Smith. He's at uh, right centre field, a short pass. Odgers, good defence from uh, the St Kilda player. Nobody making any headway at all. Eventually picked up again by Lane. A busy player down there on the half-back line. Some soccer tactics back towards centre field, but Winbanks is there for St Kilda. No one making any headway at the moment. Again, Winbanks putting himself in. Borthwick looks for the hand pass. Vasoli over to Hart. Hart at half forward. Good long kick up towards full forward. Looking for Edwards. Oh, taps it down beautifully. A chance for Gillies. But the ball picked up by Piri. Out of bounds. And we'll see a boundary throw it in the forward pocket. A throw in from about 30 metres around from the South Fremantle goal. They're leading by a point at the moment. Just over the 12 minute mark of this first quarter. It'll be Edwards. Uh, against uh, Peary. Not, oh, actually, Edwards didn't get that down. Picked up by Lane. A hurried kick back there towards the centre-half forward position. Bit of fumbling going on now. There's a chance for Fasola to get clear, but his grab can't get out of it. The umpire will ball it up about 25 metres out from the South Fremantle goal. Perfect night for football. Not a breath of wind. Just a new tour. There's the ball knocked on this time. Finally over there it goes to Little Matera. Couldn't pick it up. Picked up by Morwood. Stepped out of the back nicely. And finally a hand pass coming back wide. It's the wrong man. Oh, it's over to Burns. Lily went astray that time. Finally over the head of the pack. Coming in to meet it now as Hardy. Shows a lot of dash, but he's collared by others. No, by uh, Muir it was. And the umpire said dropping the ball. So the free kick to go to Muir there at half back. It's a high kick back there towards the centre wing position. And the umpire's found a free kick. It might go to uh, Henwood. Yes, against uh, Cowie and a 15-metre penalty. This brings him right down to the half-forward flank position. Just on the 13-and-a-half-minute mark, and they're still in front by a point, South Fremantle. Up there towards the big fella, Edwards. Got the mark. Good position that time. And Edwards only about 25 metres out from goal. has got a chance to kick his first goal for the match. He's a big fella too, Bob, isn't he? Yes, I was just <laughs> thinking that, Luke. He and Bothwick. He's a big lump. A big lump of a lad. And Jack Edwards said in the early part could be playing with North Melbourne in a couple of years. Let's hope he kicks better than that. So... They move on to two goals, 3.15 South Fremantle. St Kilda, two goals, 1.13 as we approach the 14-minute mark of the first quarter. He'll probably play in the same position as Jack if he kicks like that, Lou. There's a short pass and a mark taken out there by Peary. Peary up there at half-back, or short of half-back, kicks the ball high towards the wing position. Well, punched away that time by Lynch. A, hand, a wild hand pass that time by Hart, not a good one. Kicked off the ground by May, showing plenty of tap, pace. Finally, Machini chips in there. Machini with the ball in front of him, going after it now. Is the big fella down there, uh, Henwood, but he plays well, the big fellow, and we find the ball finally picked up by Machini. A snap at goal, but he's off target, and it's out of bounds. So it'll be a penalty free kick down there to South Fremantle with the score at the moment. Two goals, 3-15 South Fremantle. St Kilda, two goals, 1-13. Tony Jill not looking too happy at the moment, but still it's early... Uh, well, we can't say early days, but it's early in the evening. Early nights, yes. Yeah. Carter's kick out is a good one. St Kilda, though, through Muir, go back into attack. 
Oh, Keel missed the mark. Two St Kilda players collided. The other one was Lockett. And finally it rebounds to Barrett. Barrett long kick. Mace is out there. Mark though is taken uh, by the wingman Lynch. Plenty of distance in that kick too. Elphinstead at the back with Dorotech. Oh, Elphinstead, great mark. Great mark to Elphinstead who lined up at centre-half back tonight. Cowie. And plenty of uh, desperation to get it to Moorwood. Ball finally bounces for him. Oh, Muir came in pretty solidly there. Good hand pass. Narkel on the run at half forward. Can't trap it. Keel can. Over to Narkel was good handball. A grubber though. Barrett smothers. Narkel again. Snapshot. Not quite there. One behind. Wilson Kilda rushing the ball forward. No other way to put it, Bob. No, there's uh, pretty good tackling by uh, South Fremantle though. Peter Keel looks as though he's in a bit of bother there. He's uh, sort of uh, the expression on his face indicates a bit of pain and he was going to be replaced as Cowie almost took the mark but not quite holding him. Play on says the umpire and it's, uh, come, it comes down to Lynch. Lynch from right half back flank. Good long kick again. Elphinstone once more on the road. Almost juggles another mark but the umpire didn't play that one. And South Fremantle swing into attack but the ball was touch play on. It comes to Matera. He knocks it on further forward up towards centre half forward now. Still a chance for them to go forward. It's picked up by Grilyasic. I know his father would probably be watching too, George, who's uh, very well known over there in Western Australia for the, well, through the ABC. And let's hope he plays a good game. Young Rod, down towards centre-half, back again. Almost a mark to Djakovic. In fact, it did look like a trip there. The umpire calls play on. Henwood tries to do just that, but it will be a boundary throw in in the forward pocket, about 15 metres from the St Kilda goal. Just on the 17-minute uh, mark of this first quarter, and uh, South Fremantle in front by a point. They're 15 to St Kilda, 14. Ball back into play again. Knocked out by Cow. There's no one there for St Kilda. And once again, the ball is out of bounds. But this time, it's a little closer. The goal's about 10 metres around. Waiting for the ball to come back into play. It'll be Borthwick against uh, Cowie again. Borthwick got that one. Muir fumbles the ball. Finally, he comes out of the pack. OK, a hand pass coming over to Mace. That is. But once again, they're off target. And it's through for a point. So scores a dead level as we approach. So just over the 17 and a half minute mark. Two goals, three 15 points apiece. Waiting for the ball to come back into play by Carter. Up there towards the... Uh, and it's Grilliusic that takes the mark at that centre-half back position. Grilliusic is off, goes for a short one now. Looking there for Dorotich, but it was too long. Has a chance now for uh, Gillies to get the ball back. But we see Gillies go in again. Oh, ducks his head nicely, gets out of the pack and sends it back towards the half-forward line. Ball hit to the, hits the deck, going after it now as Hart with a hand pass back to Matera. Matera back to Hart, not gaining much distance. He's gone for the long kick now. That is a long kick too. And it's off the top by one. Uh, actually, the pack didn't touch, but the umpire's found a free kick. And the free kick will go back down there. I think it's to uh, Brown to take the free kick for St Gilda at full back. Brown's kick is a punt uh, kick looking there for Smith. And Smith couldn't hold that mark. The Soli's there too and finally slings the ball out. There's a chance now for St Kilda to go further forward through Tomei. Over to little Lane. Lane dodges nicely. He's clear back to Tomei again. Short kick. Now there's a mark to Cowley. Cowie at centre half forward and got a big chance now to send them deep into attack. There's the kick up there towards the full forward position. Well played by the uh, South Fremantle defence. Down goes Lane, umpire call play. That's uh, Cowie catching through the pack again. Couldn't get clear. And there's uh, still plenty of fumbling going on as we see uh, Jakovic get the ball out. Back it comes to Barrett again. And Barrett's kick is a short one, but Big Borthwick marks it OK there at half back. Nearly quarter time. Ball up towards centre wing. Morwood. To half forward. Or oh, two St Kilda players there. Mace and Muir. Eventually scooped out to Narkel. Who gets it back to Mace. Mace a short pass down towards right half forward to, well, no one in particular. Lockett broke out from goal. Tries to trap it. Nearly got offloaded. Oh, nearly a free kick too, wasn't it? Nearly, nearly was. That's about right. It wasn't. And the ball up will take place as we've got about 15 minutes of the quarter to go. No time on, so St Kilda must get it down there pretty quickly. Knocked down by Borthwick. 
trying to find Cornell, couldn't do so. Lane was on the bottom of that stack up. Lockett grabbed, picked up by Little Keel. Borthwick, good defence. Cowie is there. Matera runs past the ball. Fashini grabs it as the siren goes. And we have scores dead level at quarter time. Two goals, 15, two goals, three, 15 at uh, the first interval. Goal kickers to quarter time for South Fremantle, Vagona one and Dorotich one, and for St Kilda, Fashini one, and Smith has one goal. 15 points each of two as Mel Brown makes his way back to the coach's box. Likewise, Tony Jewell. We go down on the boundary line. Here's Stephen Phillips. Well, as a matter of fact, listening to, uh, to Mel Brown talk to his players just out there at quarter time, he was very happy with their first quarter performance. He said if they can keep it up, they've got a real chance of knocking St Kilda off. They've had a couple of miserable trips over here in recent years, and they think this could be their night. Right, thank you, Stephen. Uh, players taking up their positions now for the resumption of play. I'd say he'd be very pleased, uh, Pete, with the way that they've tackled so far. They played very well in the opening ten minutes. They certainly caught St Kilda by surprise. The Saints fought back into the quarter, though, and finished up dead level. Well, the player that impressed me most is uh, Dorotich at centre-half forward, number 17. He looks a real player to me. Nice to go along that loop. So we begin the second quarter now. South Fremantle 2-3, likewise St Kilda. Sterling Cup action from VFL Park in Melbourne and wherever you're watching around Australia, we hope you're enjoying the telecast. Burns up to Muir, who has the ball knocked away. Oh, Smith tackles perhaps a little bit too high. And the free kick going to South Fremantle's Amoroso, who's gone for a short pass over to Hardy. Hardy at right centre wing. Booming punt kick down towards centre half forward. Sharking the ball for the Saints is Cronin. Back to Burns. Burns from centre half back. Goes for a short pass. Trying to find Mace. A little bit too long for him. Smith should be able to give him some assistance. But Hardy chips in beautifully and a fine ball to get around Mace. A short pass down towards half forward. And the ball is marked out there by McGilvray. McGilvray left half forward flank for the Bulldogs. Up towards half forward. Knocked away by Piri. Dorotich again, tackled by Keel, is opposite number 17. Very scrambly start to the second term. Plenty of South Fremantle players are down there, and it's picked up eventually by Hart. A long shot at goal is going pretty close. That's not bad. It's a goal. That's his first, and South Fremantle lead by six points. Yes, a, lo a lovely piece of football by young Hart there. He uh, missed it the first time, and then he went uh, on after it again. We watch on replay now. As we see, Hart tap the ball forward, going after it again, straightens up, and a lovely goal by Hart. Back in the centre again, South Fremantle of 21 points to St Kilda, 15, a difference of a goal. Free kick going uh, to... Uh, the ball driven up there by Dennett, a long kick. Finally, it's picked up by Hart. The ball knocked to the ground now. It's Narkel coming out from centre half. Back goes for a short pass. And there's a good mark taken by Tomei for St Kilda. Long hand pass again. And there's a chance for Rogers. He's around about the centre field area. Drives it right over the centre half forward position. And Mace couldn't get over the top of his opponent, Cornell. Then he takes a fine mark at centre half back. Short pass out wide to Hardy. Had quite a few kicks so far on the match. And there we see Grigiusic taking that mark out there at half forward. Goes for a short pass. The mark taken here by McGrillvay. Oh, bad play. But he recovers okay. And that's what he should have done in the first spot. Get him up there to Whitmore. the big fella, Edwards. But there's a bit of fumbling. Edwards falls on the ball. They won't take it off him for sure. There he's that big. You'd need a road map and a water bag to get around him. Now a ball up about 25 metres out from the uh, South Fremantle goal. And they're in front by six points at the moment. There's Vagona trying to spin it out of the pack. Couldn't pick the ball up, but the umpire said he dropped it. And the free kick will go to Elphinstone for St Kilda down there in the back pocket. Short pass. It'll be OK. And marked there by Morwood. St Kilda should know they have to go straight down the gra ground uh, to win on this ground. Short pass again. And that's a good mark. And it's Grilius it's taking the mark again. Over to Hardy. Hardy's clear. I think I've got that beaten now as the ball goes back to Edwards and the big fella's got it. 
Well, we've got Grudisic, we've got Djakovic, and we've got uh, Dorotic in the side. So it looks like it, we've got the uh, Yugoslavian Embassy playing for... Uh, Mel Brown there. Mel Brown, the coach, would be pretty happy with his side performance so far as we wait now for this kick. I don't think Mel's diet's working. Nah, that uh, road map in the water bag would be appropriate there, I think, Luke. I think on this kick from about uh, 25, 30 metres out. And Vasali's off, off target and through for a point. Could have easily kicked that one, so just over the four-minute mark, it's three goals, 4.22, South three, Mantles and Gilda, two goals, 3.15. And we wait the ball to come back into play now. Second quarter Sterling Cup action from VFL Park. A lead being made by Keel. That's ignored. It comes to Odgers. Odgers at centre half back for the Saints. Look for a lead across centre wing. Smith or Cowie it is almost taking the mark. Narkel, good tackle on Grilliusic. The umpire calls play on. It rebounds to Hardy, who, as Lou mentioned, has had a lot of kicks. Elphinstone almost takes the mark. In fact, the umpire didn't pay it. He calls play on. Back towards half forward, a uh, rebound from uh, Cowie onto Smith, up to Mace, a chance for Burns, gets a beautiful bounce onto Faschini, who's usually a pretty good shot at goal with these from 30 metres out, hit the post. So bad luck for the Saints, one behind the end result, deserved more, 3 4 22 to 2 4 16. Ball back into play. Mark taken good tackle by Winbanks that was Dennett who tried to play on and Winbanks comes out with the free kick the hand passes to Keel Keel goes for a, a short pass trying to find Lockett but it wasn't very good in the mark taken by Barrett Barrett the West Australian back pocket player has represented his uh, state on a number of occasions not the greatest of kicks though on that occasion Vagoda clever tap on that was well played. It comes to Matera. Matera's pass out towards right half forward. That should have been a free kick. And the umpire has indeed played it to McGilvray. McGilvray right half forward flank for South Fremantle. Short pass and it's just grabbed inside the line by Vasoli. Not too much near a goal though. Still about 50 metres out. Now it's play on. That's a shocking kick by Vasoli. Hooked it straight out of bounds. And we'll see a penalty kick to St Kilda in the back pocket to be taken by Odgers. Well, that's two bad kicks he's had in a row, Bob, because he could have easily scored a goal before when he was having that direct shot. Yes, he took far too long to kick the ball anyway because the big fellow Edwards had made position out there, you know, right in front of goal. That's Dennett going for the punch, picked up by Moore. But over to Smith, he's not doing a bad job for the Saints at the moment. The ball back to the centre of the ground, coming out to meet it as Cow to take the mark at centre field. A hand pass to little Markle. Markle's clear. Too fast for his opponent there, goes for a short pass, not a good one and a mark taken. No, he hasn't paid the mark down there. Oh, golly, I thought that was a mark all the way that time. Two uh, uh, Amoroso, but he didn't pay it. Ball up again. Ball punched out that time by Dennett, picked up by Cornell. A nice side step coming over there with a hand pass to Barrett. Barrett shoots the ball back there towards the centre wing position. Oh, a bit of a clash goes on, down goes Mason. They're going in pretty hard at the moment. Umpire calling play on as the board comes out to Burns over to Winbanks. Nice balk by Winbanks. Back it goes to Keel to Burns again at centre half forward. That's the game. A long kick up there towards the full forward position. But a great marking defence by Barrett. So we're just on the seven and a half minute mark at South Fremantle. 22 points to St Kilda, 16. And Barrett with the ball down there in the back pocket for South Fremantle. It's a go for Narkel, had to beat two in that time, it just about did, I thought he was leg, but the umpire said no play on, and South Fremantle come out with the ball. This time it, uh, we see Djakovic driving it back towards the centre half forward position, over the head of the pack, backing up nicely is Brown for St Kilda, and it's driven back towards centre field, the ball punches the deck again, grabbed by Burnt, but it's a bad hand pass, Cowie nearly got one on the back, umpire calling play on, as they're fumbling and fooling about out there, and a hand pass comes back there, they're all missing it, and finally it's picked up by McGilvray, a long kick up towards the full forward position. But there we see Peary in the way to take the mark down there in the back pocket for the Saints. Peary going for a long hand pass out to Morwood. Morwood up to centre wing, trying to find Narkel. Almost a miraculous mark. Caught by McGilvray, and he still comes out with the, out with the ball. Well played from Phil Narkel. That was excellently done to Smith. Smith from right half forward, trying to find Lockett. 
can't do so. Chance for Fashini. Into Mace, 10 metres out from goal. Must be a score. Puts it through from behind. Had a tough oh. time there too, Bob. He could have steadied and kicked on his right foot. He, he panicked a bit. Yes, it was a great piece of play by Silvio Fashini. He really uh, did sacrifice what possibly could have been a goal himself. Put it across towards Mace. And that's the third consecutive point uh, by Robert Mace. That is uh, not the greatest of kicks out from full back either. Hardy should get there first. He's won a lot of kicks, this fellow. That one's just about out of bounds. In fact, it is. Incidentally, the black armbands is worn by the St Kilda players tonight are uh, for a young player from the thirds, the under-19s, I, I should call them, John O'Sullivan, who was tragically killed in a car accident at the weekend. So that's why the St Kilda players tonight are wearing the black armbands uh, during this match. Free kick going to South Fremantle now. And the core play on. It's driven up by Martin. Up the centre field, Gillies goes the spoil. Picked up by Cronin. Rebounds to Morewood. Good shepherd by Narkel. Morewood's kick out towards half forward, trying to find Fashini, and he's got him if it bounces, OK. Here's a chance for Silvio, 25 metres out, dodges two of them, left foot snapshot. Is again off target for St Kilda and through for one behind. Well played, Silvio Fashini, they certainly deserve better. And the Saints now creeping closer, 2-6-18 to 3-4, 22. Ten minutes gone, second quarter. Of the Sterling Cup match from VFL Park. Well, we predicted a close game, and it certainly turned out that way so far, as the ball was driven up by Cornell. Eventually marked by Vasoli. Looks for Dorotic. And Dorotic doesn't let him down. Marks over Elphinstone, decides to play on. I like the style of this fellow. Dorotic from left half forward, a short pass, and a good mark taken by Piri. Good mark by the uh, Piri down there in defence. The ball falls short, and Elphinstone's got the mark around about the centre-half back position. Four points the difference in favour of South Fremantle approaching the 11 minute mark. Smith doing pretty well at the moment for St Kilda. A hand pass coming over to Winbanks. Oh, loads of the ball. Dennett's there trying to help out uh, for South Fremantle. A bit of juggling going on. Tomei with a hand pass coming out there to the little fella uh, Lane up towards the full forward position. They all missed. They were all at the full back on the head. Here's a goal to Robert Mew. It's a goal to St Kilda. Hit the front. 11 and a half minutes gone and St Kilda in front by uh, four points. 3 6 to 3 4. Coming out again is Smith doing very well for the Saints. Shoots the ball wide and a mark here to Mace. But he's a long way out from goal. He's right out there on the centre wing position. Drives the ball down there looking for Mew. Has got a run on here and couldn't hold that mark. And it's finally out of bounds. Uh, Amoroso trying to sneak away with it but the umpire not having a bar of that. So it's out of bounds about 65 metres around from the St Kilda goal. Dennett at finally Cow. He gets the knock away from Dennett towards Robert Muir on the boundary line. Shows a bit of pace, has a hurried kick, but it's out of bounds. And there'll be a penalty free kick down there in the back pocket to uh, South Fremantle. To take the free kick will be Carter. Short pass, dangerous. Picked up off the pack by Winbanks. A long shot towards the goal, doesn't make the distance. And there we see Carter take an easy mark for South Fremantle in defence. The 12 and a half minutes gone, 22 points South Fremantle to St Kilda 24. And there's a good mark taken out there by South Fremantle, plus a 15 metre penalty. It's to be 30 metres actually. Going out there to Dennett. And he's fell over as he was getting away. The ball finally goes back there towards McGilvray. Got his hands up in the air and nearly held the mark. Dorotich couldn't pick it up. Now it's Elphington's turn to pick it up. A hurried kick, but he's put it out of bounds. He was under pressure that time. And there'll be a penalty free kick to go to Mil McGilvray up there on the centre wing position. The score at the moment is uh, three goals, 4-22. South Fremantle, St Gilda, 3-6-24. Looking for Hart. Knocked away by Brown. Back to centre wing. And picking it up well as Lynch, their wingman. South Fremantle now through Vasoli, who takes the hand pass on the run at half forward. Knocked away by uh, Piri. It rebounds to Burns. Long hand pass by Burns. Up to Griljusic. Hardy. He's played pretty well so far. Vasoli, 35 metres out, shoots at goal. And he has put it through for one behind to the Bulldogs. Which takes their score now to 3-5s. And killed a 3-6, a difference of one point. And Vasoli's kicking mightn't have been the best peep, but he's still winning the ball well. He's got the ball a lot, hasn't he, Bob? Hodges takes the mark from uh, full back. 
play on. This is umpire Tony Bryant. Hodges does just that. Long kick up over the centre, trying to find Smith, and Smith marks in front of Pasoli. Good mark by Terry Smith, former played, Tiger. Played very well tonight, Pete. He has. Morewood, short of half forward, a short pass. Too long for Keel, though. Still a chance for the Saints to swing into attack. For Sheeney, a shot at goal, hooked it over his head. A little bit too long, though, for Robert Muir, and the mark taken in the last line of defence by Carter. Who has kept Lockett pretty quiet so far. Mind you, the ball hasn't been delivered to Lockett exceptionally well. In fact, it's been delivered atrociously down there. Smith again. Mace off and cutting him on for St Kilda. Terry Smith would be uh, 50 metres out. Has had six kicks. Now, yeah, that's a better lead and a better pass. Well, I was talking about the ball being delivered to him badly, Bob, but that was a good pass, wasn't it? Yes, it's probably the first time that uh, Lockett's had the opportunity of, of giving uh, any sort of lead. Uh, every other time it's come down in a haphazard manner and uh, they've just blazed away. But uh, Lockett now uh, directly in front, only 40 metres out. And St Kilda lead by one point, 24 to 23. That looks pretty good from here, and Lockett puts through his first goal. Picked up by Burns, Burns up towards half forward, a chance for uh, a St Kilda free kick here, yes, it was on the shoulder. And Carey will take the free kick just off the edge of the square, he's gone for a short pass, and that is... OK, no, it's not, Lockett just couldn't get there. Gives the chance to Carter to clear, which he does, beautiful kick. Up the centre wing, Fashini at the back with McGilvray. McGilvray gets there first, recovers well. To half forward, Elphinston won't get there before the ball goes over the boundary line and it will be thrown in left half forward for South Fremantle. A pretty close game right from the outset. No side able to get a clear break so far. Has virtually been goal for goal. Winbanks and Dorotic to contest the boundary throw in. Neither gets a, a decisive tap out. Lane goes for a hand pass. Picked up by Cronin, ridden into the ground by Hart. Longhand pass comes out in the direction of Lane, Lane up to centre field. And there's a chance now. Oh, Cowley got into his uh, den at that time, but finally that we see uh, the ball coming out now and uh, picked up by Amoroso. Amoroso shoots it across the half-forward line. Brown got his hands to it. Oh, Hodges clashed with his uh, Peary that time. And it's uh, Vagona coming out, out down there in the forward pocket. A long shot at goal. And the big fella's got it down there. That's Henwood with the mark, who played at centre-half back in the first quarter. Yes, Henwood and Edwards have uh, swapped. Swap place. Well, he's given him a 15-metre penalty, which uh, he can't go any further than the line. And uh, it's made it a difficult shot, but uh, he's only got to run around a bit. He should do that. He's coming around. And the result is a... He missed it. He it? missed it. Well, it just goes to show, you find you've got to run and open up the goals a lot more than that, Bob. So the difference now is only six points in favour of St Kilda. Yes, A, he didn't give himself enough room, and, yeah. uh, and B, I didn't think the umpire cleared a, enough uh, area around him. OK, we wait now for the ball to come back into play. South Fremantle 3-6-24 to St Kilda 4-6-30, just over the 18-minute mark. Ball out there to, uh, to Morwood on that half uh, back flank, goes for a long pass looking for Tomei. In comes Cornell, grabs him, but he gets a hand pass back to Alphingston. It's too long, but Alphingston finally picks it up. It's a bad kick. And there we see Edwards shifted down there to centre-half back. Pick up the ball and give it a hearty. It's a long kick, but a good mark taken there on that centre-wing position by Morwood. St Kilda looking a lot stronger at the moment. Started off a, in a shaky fashion, but they're getting their game together now as Morwood drives the ball down there, but uh, Cornell's in the way. And Cornell takes that uh, mark a little short of half back. Out it goes to Hardy. Playing well. Yes, he's played well. And the ball out there to Dora Titches, the bloke I like. He's a nice build and got a nice style about him. Over to McGilvray. Kicking's let him down so far, but that's a better one. And there's a chance now for the ball to be marked out there uh, by, um, by Gillies. Gillies with the ball now, waiting to, for someone to make a lead, but decides to go for the long kick himself. But he's off target, that's out of bounds again. So they're wasting plenty of chances down there at the moment, uh, South Fremantle, Bob. Yes, and they're taking far too long to get the ball into their forward area because uh, Henwood was one out with his opponent, and uh, if, if he's any sort of a mark, he'll get it straight down while he's only one out. There's a chance now, the ball driven up there again by Hardy, but uh, he's off target, and once again it's out of bounds. 
So 19 and a half minutes gone. South Fremantle, three goals, 6.24 to St Kilda, 4, 6.30. A goal the difference. Period to bring the ball back into play. Oh, there's nearly a mark. That's a great mark to Grigasic, a beautiful mark. Yes, they don't come much better than that one. Grigasic drives the ball back there, but it falls short, punched away by Brown. Bagona has a hurried kick up there towards uh, the full forward position, but it's off the top of the pack. Actually, the fella got over the back of Henwood, so we're just on. Uh, there's the uh, half-time siren. And at half-time, it's St Kilda, four goals, 6.30. to South Fremantle, three goals, 7.25. And, uh, well, it's still a very even game, but I just felt, Bob, in that quarter, St Kilda looked a little bit steady than, uh, than uh, South Fremantle, particularly around the goal area. They, as you were saying, they were taking too long to get themselves into position and kick the ball down to their attacking zone. Yes, I would imagine that Mel Brown would still be fairly pleased with the actual efforts uh, of his side. Uh, they didn't finish it off once they got up to the forward area and took far too long to dispose of the ball in that position. Burns coming off the ground now. He and Hardy have both been fine players in the centre uh, for their respective sides. But uh, overall, I, I felt the smaller players of St Kilda really got on top in that uh, term. Uh, Morewood across the half-back line. Um, Mace uh, early in the quarter, although he kicked poorly. Fashini up forward gave them a bit of a nip around the pack. So Terry Smith and Lane, both uh, fine players, and they, they, they combine well with uh, Daryl Cowie. Cowie got the front position most of the time, but didn't finish it off by uh, being able to hold his marks. If Cowie had held the marks that he got to first, he would be very close to the best man on the ground. But uh, he didn't quite do that. Uh, Lockett only getting the one chance with uh, one goal on the board. And I would imagine that um, Tony Jewell would be instructing his players to give Lockett a little bit more room to lead to. Well, there's six, uh, what, five points in front now, St Kilda. In that quarter, South Fremantle added 1-4. St Kilda kicked 2-3. The goal kickers to half-time for St Kilda. Singles to Muir, Smith, Lockett and Fashini. And for Vagona, uh, and for South Fremantle, Vagona won, Hart won and... Dorotich won. Well, South Fremantle started off uh, well in the first quarter, Bob, but probably after about the first 10 or 15 minutes, it has been uh, mostly St Kilda. Yes, uh, although uh, Vasoli has continually uh, won the ball well. His disposal uh, left a bit to be desired. Uh, as I mentioned before, Hardy in the centre has uh, played well, and uh, Dorotich at centre-half forward has, uh, made, has kept, had the hands of Elphinstone uh, full right throughout. Uh, he's had to really concentrate uh, and be with Dorotich. He's a nice looking mark, uh, kicks the ball long and uh, Vagona also is ever dangerous uh, but uh, it was mainly the, the smaller players of St Kilda although uh, I must give full credit to uh, Barrett and Carter in defence. Uh, Barrett, Carter and Cornell across that last line certainly have made it tough for St Kilda. It wasn't just a case of the disposal coming into the forward line because uh, Carter has made it hard for uh, uh, Lockett right throughout. OK, at half-time, 30-25 in favour of St Kilda. Sterling Cup action from BFL Park. We'll take a break and we'll be back for further comment in just a moment. Knocked down to Hardy, kick number 11. Cowie marking at centre-half back for the Saints. Cowie and Alphonson have swapped feet. Again. Cowie, long kick up towards half-forward. Looking for Muir and Muir marks. Great grab. Bobby Muir, who kicked seven, a great return to form for him in the reserves last Saturday. Mace, at half forward, tries to trap it, not successful. Narkel late on the scene, good tackle. Is it holding the ball or in the back? No, says the umpire play on, Narkel does. Too long for Smith, intercepting as Edwards went, uh, or he lost it. Good tackle by Mace again. Out to Muir, close to the boundary line. Nowhere to go. And out of bounds, the Bulldogs looking for out of bounds on the full. You're getting it too. And in fact, it is. Mater it's uh, Mart Martin. And a good mark taken by Hart. Hart at right half back flank for the Bulldogs. And trailed by five. Cowie at the back. Dorotich in front. Rebounds to Burns. Then he lost it. Long hand pass. Dorotich. Flashes with Hodges, picked up by Benny Vagona. Vagona at right half forward, should put the Bulldogs deep into attack. He's looking for a lead, doesn't see one, kicks it long. It won't quite get there, or will it rebound? Through for one behind. So four points the difference now at VFL Park in the Sterling Cup. As we wait the ball to come back into play, this time through Piri. Former Tiger. 
Perry looking for a lead across the half-back line, brings it out towards the member stand flank. Odger's getting underneath the ball, Smith likewise, and the latter takes the mark. I mean, a pretty good player. Now he gives it over to Odgers, the back pocket player. Odgers kick up towards centre wing. A lot of players misjudging the flood of the ball. Picked up by Edwards, tackled well. Tomei goes for the hand pass, that's OK. And the Saints, through Cunningham, swing into attack. Cunningham and turn up towards Muir. Muir a pass down towards full forward, and the mark is brought in by Lockett. Well, Lockett's already kicked one goal. He's only about uh, 25 metres out. It's about a 45 degree angle, but could easily kick this one. The distance certainly won't worry him. It's, uh, we're just on the two and a half minute mark and four points the difference in favour of the Saints into this third quarter. Kicked by Lockett. That's a... Oh, hit the post! So the difference now, five points. Four goals, 7.31, St Kilda to South uh, Fremantle, 3.8.26. Waiting for the ball to come back into play. Carter drives it out to the outer side of the ground to the half-back flank position. And there's just about a mark. It'll be a free kick to Borthwick, but he says play on as the ball is finally driven up there by Hart. It's a good pass and marked here by Matera. Matera with the ball out there on the centre wing position. Down towards the forward pocket. Dorotich is in the front buzzy, but the ball is out of bounds. This time it's about uh, 50 metres around from the South Fremantle goal. They're trailing by five points at the moment. So there's not much in this game tonight. Well, Cowie and Doritz for going to get a fresh air shot virtually. The umpire fell over. The ball knocked back now. Finally kicked back there towards the uh, half forward flank. And a hand pass coming over quickly as we see running to open goal there was Hart. But it's smothered that time uh, by Peary. Peary's kick is a long one out towards that half-back flank. It actually beat the pack. Coming out to meet it now is Big Borthwick. And he uh, taps the ball back. A hand pass coming back there to that position. Cornell gets a hurried kick back again to the boundary line. And it's uh, Vasoli picking it up right on the line. A hand pass coming over to Vagona. Short pass. It'll be all right. The mark taken there by Dorothy. He'd be about, uh, let me see, no more than about 35 metres out from goal. Pretty fair angle, though, Lou. Yeah, he's on a pretty acute angle, just about on the boundary line. He's a and, left, left uh, footer, though, Lou. Uh, he's a left footer, so he'll be able to swing the ball right into the goals. We're just over the four-minute mark. And this, if he's accurate enough, will put them in front. There's the kick. Not a bad sort of a kick, and it's a goal. What a beautiful shot. Up to half forward. No addition to the score, and picked up by Griljusic, down towards full forward for the Bulldogs again, or could have almost been against Perry there. Vagona must score here, 10 metres out, and he's put it through for a goal to South Fremantle. That's his second, and the Bulldogs go further ahead. And it's Benny Vagona, an extremely dangerous player across that half-forward line, covering uh, quite a bit of territory, and uh, we watch again on replay as Griljusic comes out of the centre line, puts the long kick down, Perry and his opponent Henwood falling, a quick snap by Vagona. It's certainly dangerous across that forward line. Two goals to Dorotich, two goals to Vagona. Now, uh, South Fremantle have gone to a lead of seven points in this third quarter. Once again, looking dangerous. They started the match off well. St Kilda got back into it. Knocked down by Smith. Chance for the Bulldogs again. Big Borthwick is there, but the umpire has found a free kick. And, in fact, it's going to Borthwick, which he'll take at centre field. Well, he's winning in the ruck. The ball over the centre-half forward position. Oh, there's nearly a mark to the... Uh, now he's called play on to Dorotich, but he finally gets it out to Hart, who juggles the ball. Beautiful. Another goal coming up. There's he on target or off target. Yes, the goal. Oh, they're killing the Saints at the moment. So their score is six goals, 8.44. to St Gilda, 4.731. Just on the seven-minute mark, and they're in plenty of trouble now, the Saints. Yes, so they're not getting it away from the centre at all, Lou, and uh, Hart uh, showing a good turn of speed, and that's the second uh, goal on the run that Hart has kicked, and they uh, had a perfect shot in replay there of uh, Hart's... Uh, well, he just dashed away from those and killed the players. Tony Jill not very happy at all. Borthwick uh, dominating the knockouts at the centre bounce, but he's far taller than his uh, St Kilda opponent there in Winbanks, gets it out again. And it's Vasoli driving it well over the centre half forward uh, for the Bulldogs. Vagona was grabbed, but the umpire didn't see that. It's Morwood uh, couldn't get clear. There's another goal coming up as Matia gets out to Vagona. A snap at goal, and he's put it through. Another goal to uh, South Fremantle. Griljusic takes the free kick at right centre wing for the Bulldogs, up towards half forward. It's palmed down to Hart, who's kicked two goals already. Well shepherded by Dorotich. Up to Gillies. 
Fischini's there with him. Gilly's on the boundary line. Snapshot going pretty close and knocked through by Piri. Henwood trying to shepherd the ball through, but not successful. And another behind to South Fremantle. They lead by 20 points as Piri prepares to bring the ball back into play. Short uh, kick. As long as you kick the ball clear of hand and foot. Piri did just that. Oh, Hardy got one as he went through for his corner. He might get a free kick for it. Certainly was uh, or appeared high from here. Oh. Whoops, a daisy right on the uh, the right ear. Not a doubt about that. The wind banks uh, indicated he hit uh, Hardy with his uh, shoulder, but uh, by that uh, replay there, he, he shoulders, a long uh, shoulder. Well, his shoulder's <laughs> pretty low down, I would say. So Hardy takes the free. It slews off the side of the boot just a little bit. Hart's in there again. Out comes Vagona. Has already kicked a couple this quarter. Gets it up to Dorotic and he marks. Dorotic. 20 metres out from goal. He's kicked two already. And Mel Brown, I think, would be, I think, suitably happy with his side's performance so far in this term. Got a couple of top forwards in this fella, Dorotich and Vagona running well, and uh, Hart's not doing a bad job coming down the ground with the big fella, Borthwick, dominating the centre mounts, as Pete. And Hardy's also got uh, a number of kicks, I think about 14 to date. Dorotich kicks at goal. The goal umpire doesn't move. It's full points. That's his third, and the Bulldogs go further ahead at VFL Park, 8 9 to 4 7. And Pete, that's five goals in five and a half minutes. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's very rare that you see uh, an avalanche of goals in night football like that. And we, uh, once again, the danger of Vagona, the skill of Vagona, as he picked out Dorotic under a bit of pressure, but there wasn't a, if it wasn't a mark, it was a free kick anyway. And uh, Dorotic with his third goal, proving a handful at centre-half forward. Just over the uh, ten-and-a-half minute mark, and it's 26 points, the difference in favour of South Fremantle. Borthwick again. Well, he actually didn't get that tap out, but it's OK. It's picked up by Edwards, and they go back into attack again. Brown overruns the ball. There's nearly a free kick. And now the umpire called play as Narkel tries to get out of the pack. And he's got a... Uh, no, what's he going to ball it up out there on the centre wing position? So the Saints in the hot seat at the moment, trailing by 26 points. Windbank's off, fully on. Ball uh, still at that centre position, coming out of the pack as Lynch gets a hand pass back to Borthwick, and they swing back into attack again. But it's finally picked up by Alphys that has been switched back to centre-half back. And there's a good mark taken here by Frawley for St Kilda. Short pass, not a good one. A chance now for Robert Mew to pick it up if he can. Running around in circles, goes for a short pass. It'll be OK and a mark here to Keel. And Keel will only be about, let me see, uh, about 20 uh, metres out from goal and about a 45-degree angle. You can see the angle there on the screen. And, of course, if he kicks this one, it's going to be a pretty handy one for them. There's the kick. Oh, it's a shocking kick, not coming around enough. And it's through for one point. So at South Fremantle, eight goals, 9.57 to St Kilda, 4.8.32. And we're just on the 12-minute mark of this third quarter. And St Kilda really in plenty of trouble at the moment as the ball goes back there towards centre-half back. And Frawley, just coming on the ground, has taken his second mark. Kicked by Frawley's down there to the forward pocket, looking there for the uh, locket. And locket's got the mark. So there's another chance for St Kilda to score a goal. We're waiting on Lockett. Already kicked one goal. There's yes. the mark. And that Lockett there just showing uh, how he's kicked the 27 goals so far this year. That was a nice mark. Let's see whether they can kick this goal. It's a much uh, more acuter angle than the other fellow had just a moment ago. Let's see what he can do with this one. They badly need a goal at the moment, St Kilda. They're trailing by uh, 25 points. There's the kick. Ah, oh, that's a good goal. A nice goal by Luck. Up the half forward, Knuckles kick just past Keel, but Keel should be able to gather it in close to the boundary line. He does, it's a real grubber, Lockett. Very handy goal, he kicked just then, back to Narkle, who spins into trouble instead of out of it, lost the ball, the umpire says holding the ball, and the free kick going to Henwood at right back pocket. He's gone for a short pass, up to Hardy, who's the leading kick getter on the ground at the moment. Matera, or slips over, holding the ball, pretty sudden death there. And Matera losing the free, it will go to Brown. Brown just short of left half forward. He plays on. The Saints trail by 19 points. Henwood in the road. You might say any port in the storm. Down goes Keel. 
umpire ball I think has taken the end the option open to him and that is a bounce and that will take place left half forward flank force and Kilda Borthwick and Cowie it comes to Vasoli Narkel gave his opponent a nudge in the back but the umpire calls play on Matera out to Hardy again Narkel well played from Hardy Hardy up towards centre wing in front is Morwood at the back Amoroso picked up by Fashini very scrambly game at the moment plenty of fumbling I guess a little bit of dew out there at the moment making the ball difficult to handle and the umpire again this time Tony Bryant has decided on a bounce and on this occasion only a couple of meters from the circle itself Let's see if we can get it away from that center Borswick is there loses out to Cowie but it goes once again to Hardy oh beautiful spin out Hardy's kick back to Narkel and Narkel takes a fine mark at center wing he decides to play on to get the ball moving quickly looks for and finds Burns but well short of half forward and the 15 meter penalty is it or not Run by Tony Bryant blowing the whistle Muir went down but he just waves him away Burns kick up the full forward good mark taken by Barrett He's a fine player this fellow West Australian representative over to Matera back to Carter Carter at right half back flank brings it up the center wing too long for Brown to mark but it's a South Fremantle mark out there on center wing it's taken by Hart Looks for Dorotich, and Dorotich marks in front of Elphinstone. There's Dorotich with the ball now at half forward. Good distance out from goal, but he goes for the long kick. That's what St Kilda should be doing. Off the top of the pack. Picked up by Moore, but he backs into trouble that time, and he loses the ball. Finally, we see Hodges go. Now it's uh, Cronin going for a hand pass back there to Morwood. Morwood uh, is, puts his kick out there on the wing position. And finally, we see a hand pass coming out now to Mew. Couldn't pick the ball up. Still plenty of fumbling as it's socket off the ground, back towards centre field. And they're getting away with the ball. A long hand pass coming out from Matera. Oof. But a fumble that time by McGilbray. But Matera's got it again. Goes for a short pass. It'll be OK. And there's a mark to South Fremantle. And it's uh, Amoroso with a short pass now. Right across there to Big Borth. We can set up half forward directly in front, about 55 metres out from goal. The St Kilda player there, I think it uh, crept over the mark by about five or six metres that time. Up to the full forward position. Oh, that's a great mark nearly to uh, Edward, but couldn't hold it. Finally, we see Morwood going down. And finally, a hand pass coming over to Elphinstone. A kick back towards uh, Big Berg and uh, Cowie flies high. Couldn't hold the mark, but still got it under control. Goes for a hand pass back now. And there's a chance for St Kilda to get the ball clear. It's driven up there by uh, Mace. And down goes Frawley, can't pick the ball up. Finally, it comes back now to Henwood for South Fremantle at centre field. Oh, balks nicely around Smith that time. And there's oh, nearly a mark. He's yes. playing the mark to Grilliusic. Yes, Grilliusic with the mark out there on the centre wing position. There's the kick over that half forward line down to the forward pocket. At the back there is Peary, goes the punt. Ball knocked to the ground by going to the danger man down there on the forward line. Could oh. be a free kick. He was grabbed by a mile that time. And was no one near the ball. So Vagona, as Bob mentioned before, the real danger down there in attack for the South Fremantle side. And they're leading by 21 points at the moment. And we're just over the 17 and a half minute mark of this third quarter. St Kilda in plenty of trouble. Haven't won a match for the year and they keep on playing like this. They don't look like winning one tonight. And there's a pass and a mark taken there by Gillies down there in the forward pocket position about 40 metres out from goal. Pretty close to the boundary line, as you can see. South Fremantle at the moment lead 57 to 38 19 point advantage should get the distance he's done that how's the accuracy not bad I'd say it's a goal great goal kicked by Gillies Cowie now the Saints turn Smith overruns the ball and gives South Fremantle a chance to get clear as it's booted away by Cornell but the mark is taken by Brown Brown at centre half back or well, just up from it goes straight downfield trying to find Smith who couldn't complete the mark Barrett playing well down there in the back pocket the umpire has found a free kick he did blow the whistle and it will be downfield and the free kick will be taken by Lynch Lynch at left half back flank for the Bulldogs back towards center field Morewood in front can't take the mark Elphinstone almost tripped over his opponent that time as the ball is paddled into the open spaces a chance for Smith now he fumbles Lynch surely got into his back and Terry Smith will take the free kick at right centre wing he decides to play on 
ball obviously becoming very slippery down there. Elphinstone goes for the long kick. Lockett behind his opponent, picked up by Fashini though, and a left foot snapshot. That's pretty close, a badly needed goal for St Gilda. Silvio Fashini, two goals, and the Saints come a little bit closer. 9-9 to 6-8 at VFL Park. Well, if ever you need an example, uh, as Mel Brown uh, is telling his players, an example of what the value of a long kick is. Uh, that ball, uh, the big kick from Elphinstone from the centre of the ground. That's not Elphinstone now, of course. Fashini uh, snapping the ball, but it was a result of a very long kick from Robert Elphinstone. Just over the 20-minute mark of this third quarter, and the difference now is 19 points. Well, that's the way they've got to go, straight at the goals. Knocked out that time uh, by Cowie. Back it goes to Frawley, over to Narkel at half forward. The kick long into that forward pocket. Lock it in front, punched away that time by Carter. Fashini breaks clear, another long snap at goal, but this time it won't make the distance, plus a top uh, target and out of bounds. Well, that's what uh, South Fremantle are doing. Once they get the ball over the half forward line, they're going long at the goals. Bob and St Gilda have been messing about and taking too long to get it down there to lock it. Seems to be the general pattern with a lot of these sides at the moment. And then we see uh, coming out now with a hand pass back towards Brown. And finally it's uh, Bel Belosi uh, taking the ball back there towards that half uh, wing position. And finally a mark taken out there by... Oh, a bit of a fumble. And the ball is out of bounds. One of you the ball to come back into play. Vasali playing very well, Lou. At the moment, yes. Been a very strong player. There's the ball knocked out again by Both the Borthwick and a hand pass finally coming over there to Smith. Smith's clear with another long hand pass back to Tomei, but he can't get clear. Finally gets it over to Burns. Another hand pass to Brown. And the kick is up there towards the full fourth because it's not a bad sort of a shot in oh. the post. Oh gully. So it's nine goals, nine sixty-three. South Fremantle, St Kilda, six goals, nine forty-five. Borthwick off, and Dennett back on the field as Carter brings the ball back into play, favours the outer side of the ground, and there is Dennett, the man I mentioned, but it's out without being touched, and it'll be a free kick to St Kilda, and the recipient will be Phil Narkel. He's the nearest man. Narkel left half forward, but a fair way from goal, from fifty-five metres. Subsequently goes for a short pass. Lockett leading and marks. Good mark. Well, he's got a fair bit of pace over the initial 10 metres, Tony Lockett. And used that to good advantage there. It was a good pass, a good lead. And if he can cap it off with a goal, it would certainly put St Kilda right back in this match. He's kicked two already, young Lockett. And as Lou mentioned at half-time, could be the first Saints player to kick 100 goals in the season since Bill Moore. He seemed to drop the ball OK, but he didn't kick it well. Didn't even make the distance. A real scramble out there now. And umpire Michael Ball has decided on a bounce, but it's only about 15 metres out from the St Kilda goal. Palm down to Fashini. Fashini goes for the hand pass. In towards Carter, and Carter marks just inside the boundary line, I think, yes. Carter left back pocket for the Bulldogs. We'll get them out of the danger zone. He should go for the long kick, which in fact he has done. Underneath it is Tim A, and a good grab over the top taken by Dennett, who just came on, as I mentioned, to replace Borthwick. Dennett's kick back towards centre wing, and the mark taken by Darrell Cowie. At Cowie at right centre wing, short pass, down towards oh, half forward, golly. fisted away by Henwood. He got very high, Dennett in there again, going through solidly as Robbie Muir. Muir's hand pass to Fashini, goal coming up if he's accurate, shoots, and it looks OK from here, four points. Three goals for Silvio, the Saints right back in business. Yes, well, I think the inexperience of young Dennett uh, really showing up on that occasion. And it's Tony Jewell, possibly a little bit happier now, but uh, on replay now we watch as Robert Mule gets a hand pass and there's no mistake with Fashini when he gets in that range of goals. But young Dennett, after taking a lovely mark, uh, unfortunately went to the side and was called play on by the umpire and then a poor kick went straight to the opposition. The stay with a 24-minute mark of this third quarter. It's only 12 points the difference now. And South Fremantle led by, I think, 26 points in this quarter, Pete. They had a very good lead early, Lou, but the Saints 51 to 63, only a couple of goals down. Well, the Saints have got to go straight at the goals. We see Burns get a kick off the side of his boot and a mark taken there by Tomei. Cowie to the ruck has made a difference, Lou. Yep, and the short kick out wide by Keel, and that's a good mark. And the uh, 
big full forward's got it again, uh, Lockett. Already kicked two goals. He'd be about 45 metres out. The only one problem that uh, Lockett is making at the moment, though, Lou, he's, in, he's very rarely leading straight up the yeah, ground. He's he's one, his first goal was the only time that he's gone directly up the ground. The rest of the time, he's led to the pockets. Well, he's making his shot uh, much more difficult from this uh, position, 45 metres out. There's the kick by Lockett. Oh, not a bad sort of a kick, and uh, it's a goal! So it's only a goal, the difference now. Nine goals, 9.63 South Fremantle. With St Kilda bouncing back, eight goals, 9.57. Into the time on period by about 10 seconds. Cowie once again getting it out of the centre to May with a kick off the side of the boot. A quick hand pass to Keel and uh, Lockett coming wide. And although it was a lovely kick, he'd uh, be more, he'd be far better off if he can lead straight up the ground. Ball knocked out again by Dent at that time, but Smith sends uh, St Kilda back into attack. Henwood comes out to meet it, but can't pick it up. It's finally picked up here now by Cornell for South Fremantle. That's a long kick up there to Dorothy, but punched away by Alfingston. They're looking a lot better now, St Kilda. Smith gets a hand pass back off, fumbled by Mace, but he's able to recover and kick the ball wide and mark. In comes Henwood, loses sight of the ball. It's little Markle still in front, trying to tap it back, but he can't get clear. Knocked on by Keel. Finally, it's Dennett picking it up, and it's Vasoli going for a short pass. It's all right. And finally, another long hand pass coming over to Vagano. He's played a great game. It goes for a pass. Looking up there for Edwards, but he couldn't hold the mark. And down they go. Finally, coming through is Peary. Sidesteps nice to take the ball away from the danger zone. Peary back to centre wing. Grilliusic and Nark will do battle. The ball might uh, be the winner if it gets to the boundary line. No, it's tapped uh, tap back in. Still in play. Amoroso and Morwood. And the real pack developing a bounce down. 25 points the difference it was at the 10 minute mark. It's now only a goal the difference in favour of South Fremantle. The Saints coming right back into it in the latter stages of this quarter. They certainly looked at beaten side early on, but they've struggled back. Vasoli's kick up towards half forward, marked by Mace. Mace on half back into centre field. Chance for Barrett to intercept, and he nearly got one for his corner. Barrett at right centre wing, puts the Bulldogs into attack again. Mace could once again turn them back. Hart is there, Mace well tackled. Over goes Matera, push in the back. Has not killed a free kick, it's taken by Gary Odgers. Odgers at left half back flank. Back to centre wing. No mark taken there, picked up by Vagona. Taps the ball out wide. Chance for Burns if he gets a favourable bounce, he does. Going through is Croton. Croton at uh, centre field, long kick down towards full forward and Fashini. Off the ground by Silvio, close to the 10 metre square. Who's home? Will it roll through? One behind. One point to St Kilda, makes the difference five points now in the Sterling Cup. 63 to 58. It's turned out to be a thriller again as Carter brings the ball back into play towards the member stand flank. Over the top, Henwood takes the mark and has been paid by the umpire. Henwood at left half back. South Fremantle look to have the game in their keeping halfway through the term. They're led by 25 points at the 10 minute mark. Elphinston, but every St Kilda player has lifted his game. Elphinston just from the point of the square in towards the circle. Barrett is there. Hot in pursuit is Darrell Cowie. Barrett grabbed with not in possession, he'll take the free kick. And the difference is only five points, uh, 28 and a half minutes gone with uh, Barrett with the ball for South Fremantle at centre field. It's over the half forward line. Ball knocked down by Moore, would recover as well, but he's grabbed by Hardy. Finally, the ball kicked up there by Amoroso up towards the full forward position. There's a go now for the big fella, Edwards, to, if he can pick it up, but Peary's right on his tail. Back it goes to uh, Dora Tiff, but it's a shocking kick, but... It might be all right. Now it goes too long for the uh, South Fremantle players. Finally, it's forced out, and it's May scouting out nicely to send the ball back out there towards the centre wing position. Oh, Narkel nearly got one in the back. They crash, and finally the umpire calling play on as the ball is cleared away. Out there on that wing position by St Kilda, and it's finally we see uh, Brown getting it down there towards that full forward, centre-half forward position, and a mark taken here now by Frull. He'd be about, let me see, about 45 metres out from goal on a very slight angle. Short pass. Oh, Lockett got under that one. Ball finally pushed back there now. Oh, down they go. 
And out it comes again and finally cleared out by South Fremantle's defence out towards their half-back uh, line. Burns couldn't pick it up. He went without the ball. Mueller threw himself at it. And the umpire said he'll get a free kick. So we're right on the uh, 29 and a half, or just over the 29 and a half minute mark. And there's still five points the difference in favour of South Fremantle. Muir's kick is up there towards the full forward position. And there's a mark to Faschini. And he's already kicked uh, three goals. Right on the boundary line, but uh, knowing Faschini, he could easily put this one through. Will it come around enough? It won't reach the dead distance. And there's the siren to end the third quarter. And we've got a big ball game in our hands now. Nine goals, 9.63 South Fremantle. To St Kilda, eight goals, 11.59. Umpire Tony Bryant checking on the readiness of all players as he comes in to bounce the ball for the final quarter of this Sterling Cup match from VFL Park. The Bulldogs leading by four points, 9-9-63 to 8-11-59. Ideal condition for football as it's knocked away by Edwards. Matera doesn't get a good hand pass in. Barrett gets into the back of his opponent and it'll be a St Kilda free kick to Smith. Smith to Cowie. Cowie to right half forward. Loose ball for Lockett the chase. Doesn't get there first. Brown is there, Narkle, he gets overrun very quickly. Now he comes out with the ball. Oh, beautifully long kick up towards full forward. That should make the difference three <coughs> points. Narkle just off target, but a good long kick at goal, bringing up one flag. 63 to 60. Beats bad luck for uh, South Fremantle. Uh, Brad Hardy, who was dominating the centre, after he received that knock in the third term, went down to the forward pocket, and he's still in the forward pocket now. So uh, in the third quarter, they were forced to shift Fagona off the forward line, and uh, that took away the ever-dangerous Fagona. He's back down on the forward line now, but Hardy's still not in the centre. Yes, Hardy had uh, up to then about 17 kicks. He had played very well indeed. Oh, Moore had got one very high, not seen by the umpire. At least I presume so, because he didn't give a free kick, but he's OK. Moore now fires out the long-hand pass. Burns at left centre wing. Goes for the short one, or to Shocker. Perhaps he was trying to find Cowie, but it went nowhere near him. Now Cowie's got a second chance as he paddles the ball out to Brown. Brown from half forward. Looks for Lockett. Can't find him. Good mark taken down there by Carter. Who brings it around the member stand side. Not a great kick by Carter. Out of bounds. Gave his teammate down there, Edwards. No chance of getting to it. And we'll see a boundary throw in. Left half forward for St Kilda. Minute and three quarters gone in the final term. Cowie in ruck comes in from the side. Beats Edwards for it. Can't find a rover. Vasoli comes out with the ball. Short kick up the centre wing. Gillies sees the ball over the line in front of him and we'll see a boundary throw in at, uh, well, still round about left half forward for the Saints. Just over the two-minute mark of this last quarter. Three points the difference in favour of South Fremantle. Finally picked up off the pack that time beautifully by uh, Burns. A short pass and what a rip it was, too. And a mark taken there by Lockett. This time he's... Uh, Right in front of the goals, about uh, 25 to 30 metres out. And Lockett's already kicked three goals. Of course, if he's successful this time, that'll be a difference of three points in favour of uh, St Kilda. Just over the two and a half minute mark of this last quarter. Waiting on Lockett to go for goal number four. There's the kick. And that's a good one. Ball out of bounds on the centre wing position, just on the four minute mark. Nine goals, 9.63 South Fremantle. Trailing St Kilda by three points, 9.12.66. South Fremantle, of course, led by 25 points at the 10 minute mark of the third quarter. But it's been all St Kilda ever since. Burns trying to get clear. A ball up will take place. No, correct that. It's a free kick going to Basoli. He's played Who a fine game. He Pete. has played a great game. Mark taken by Hart. Hart is at the right half forward flank. The lead being made down there by Borthwick. Chance for Hardy now in the forward pocket and just can't scoop the ball in before it sees uh, before it goes over the boundary line. And we'll see a boundary throw in right forward pocket for the Bulldogs. Four and a half minutes gone. Piri and Doritic. Doritic palms it over the back, got plenty of height. Up to Matera. Matera, or over to Gillies, who overruns the ball. Vagona gets leg. Play on, says the umpire. Gillies offloaded beautifully by Perry, but he goes for a hand pass. Doritic, 15 metres out, a snapshot. Oh, missed. One behind to the Bulldogs. 64 to 66. Two points the difference. 
Can South Fremantle come back? St Kilda looking the better side at the moment. Morewood does the kicking in. A short pass to Perry. He might have gone over the line, though, has he? According to umpire Ball, he has. And that will mean a ball up at the edge of the square. Well, he kicked off over the side marking there, so the umpire had a pretty, uh, pretty good look at it from his position. Had he come straight out, he probably wouldn't have seen it. So bounce down. Borthwick can't get clear. In fact, nobody can. Once again, we'll see a bounce. This time about 15 metres out from goal. And it's very crowded down there too. It's been about 20 players around the ball. Knocked down for the Saints towards uh, Smith and also Mace. Hart caught. Good tackle by Mace. Hart into his back. Could have almost been a free kick for that infringement. Smith comes out with the ball. Smith to Elphinstone. Elphinstone to Knuckle. And the Saints should get out of trouble. And Knuckle out there at half back. Goes for a pass up towards the half forward line. And Burns takes a great mark at centre field. Only two points the difference in favour of St Kilda. They go back into attack again. Ball tapped on nicely by Muir. There's a chance now for Carter to go for a long hand pass back there. Down they go. It's a chance here now for um, South Fremantle to get clear. Finally, they take the ball away from that uh, centre uh, wing position or half-back flank position by Martin. A bit of fumbling, but it's Hart coming out of the pack. The centre half forward. A long kick down there toward the full forward zone. It's a goal! Yes! Oh, what a ripper. That's his third. And they've hit the front. 10 goals, 10.70 South Fremantle, St Gilda 9.12.66. Yes, great defensive work by South Fremantle there. They uh, were in a little bit of trouble in defence. They took it away with good teamwork. And then once again, the value of having that long kick, it yep. went over the heads of the players, uh, possibly forcing it to get through for a goal, but it was a well-deserved goal. Well, we're back in the centre now with uh, South Fremantle in front by four points. Just on the seven-minute mark of this last quarter, and St Kilda in plenty of trouble as the ball is knocked out by Edwards over to Matera. And they swing back into attack, South Fremantle. Over there, half forward, and off the top of the pack. Here's Vagona breaking clear, a left foot snap at the goals. But he's off target, and it's... Oh, he's through for a goal! Ho -ho! Knocked down to Bashini. Who miraculously gets uh, boot to ball. The Saints swing into attack now through Frawley. Frawley... Looks for Lockett, oh great mark, superb use of the body by the young Saint full forward. He's already kicked four and a chance for his fifth goal, his side at the moment trails by ten points. So Tony Lockett, pretty well directly in front of goal, and the way he's been kicking tonight I'd venture to suggest he'll boot this one. He's only about 35 metres out at most. Goal here will put the Saints only six points down, only four points down. Looks okay. Five goals to Tony Lockett, and once again, it's four points the difference. Yes, and good play by Fashini. Uh, he miraculously, as you put it, Pete, uh, somehow got boot to ball out of the centre, and at Frawley now with a long kick down. And if you get the ball down quickly to a player like uh, Lockett, uh, where he's got space and he is one out, uh, he you know, surely must get 50, you know, a 50 50 uh, a met a ball of the time, <laughs> but uh, 50 percent that's right. Well, it's four points the difference again. There's never been too much between these sides all night. Fashini down to half forward again for St Kilda. The Bulldogs defending desperately. Lynch can't get the hand pass in. The umpire has blown the whistle. A ball up will take place just off the point of the square in St Kilda's attacking zone yet again. Lynch limping too. Cowie gets a mile in the air but hits it straight to Lynch who almost threw it away quickly. Knocked on to Matera. Burns in trouble, out of trouble. Two Bulldogs are there though and it's picked up by Martin who hooks it back towards centre wing and a good grab taken by Tomei. Tomei at left centre wing for St Kilda. The umpire calls play on. He's gone for a short pass trying to find Burns. Smith backs him up but gets caught pretty quickly. And the ball up again on centre wing. Still four points the difference. Ten minutes gone in the term. And Vasali almost begrudgingly handing the ball back to umpire ball. Bounce up Cowie to contest. Cowie against Edwards. Fashini, oh, kick. grab, not in possession. He'll take the free kick. Free kick to Fashini. Played a pretty good game here tonight for St Kilda. Short pass. Oh, and a good mark by Tamay. A hand pass coming back in out of Muir. Muir down there on that forward pocket. The umpire's bringing the ball back. It's only four points the difference. South Fremantle, 76 points. 
to St Kilda 72, 10 and a half minutes gone of this last quarter. And it's still anybody's game. Waiting on Tomei from that half forward flank position about 65 metres out from goal. Up there towards the full forward position, off the top of the pack. And there we see Lynch knocking the ball back here. A chance now for South Fremantle to break clear. The ball finally driven around there by Hart. Helping still, it was too long. Dorotic comes after it now. Takes, oh, he fell over. It's a bit of bad luck. Umpire still calling play on. There's still a bit of a struggle going on. No one can break clear. Finally, it's picked up by Crone and he loses it. Dorotic goes in again. The umpire's going to ball it up on the South Fremantle half forward line about uh, 75 metres out from the goal. Still four points the difference. Knocked out by Cowie. There's Hardy going after, but this time it's out of bounds on the centre wing position. Well, it's a pretty tough game out there, Bob, at the moment. Both sides really going in after it. It's yes, desperation plus, Lou. But, uh, the biggest difference I feel to St Kilda has been the fact that Cowie has gotten on top with the ruck work. But that, on that occasion, he's given away a free kick to Doritich. Doritich will take that free kick out there on the wing position. Boots it over the centre half forward. Off the top of the pack as they go now for Gillies to get it out to Matera. The umpire said he dropped the ball. And the free kick will go to Wodges down there between fullback and centre half back position for St Kilda. Going out wide. Short pass. It'll be okay. Picked up by Fashini playing all over the ground at the moment. Decides to go for a bit of a run. That's the second. Now the third up there towards the wing position. And a long kick back there towards centre half forward. And Burns flies beautifully in front of the pack to take a great mark. They're trailing by four points. There's the lead coming up the locker, but he couldn't pick it up. Still plenty of scrambly play down. There's nearly one on the back with the umpire said play on. I thought Lane went down with a push in the back, but the umpire said no. Finally it comes out, kicked off the ground, back there towards centre half back. That's Burns crashing through the back. He's clear. Gets a hurried kick. He's put it through. Great play by Burns that time. And killed by two points at the 13-minute mark of the term. Can South Fremantle come back? Great goal by Burns. Certainly one of the goals of the night. Picked up by Hart at centre field. A wobbly punt only travels about 35 metres. Morwood in front, knocked away by Hardy. Morwood gets the rebound quickly, recovers well. Shoots out the hand pass, that's OK. Mace from half-back. Up the centre field, good mark taken by Frawley. Cowie calling for it, but he goes long. Looks for Muir, who goes for the knock-on, not successful. And the ball-up will take place 35 metres from the St Kilda goal. Well, St Kilda have looked a lot better since they've been kicking long too, Peter. They have indeed, getting the ball down to Lockett, and he's done a fine job down there at full forward. He's already got five and certainly has been uh, a great player for them tonight. Burns does battle, loses out to Grilicic. Play on. Out it comes to Hart. Hart in turn to Dorotic. Dorotic at half forward. He's gone for a short pass, and that's OK. No, it's not. No mark. Vagona, well caught. Well, I reckon that was a mark, Pete. Well, that's how I called it. Perry went to play on. They get dispossessed. Dorotic now. A chance to make amends. In towards full forward. Hart is there. Hardy touched through for one behind, so that makes the difference now one point. One point in it. 77 to 78 at the 14-minute mark of the term. Morwood. He'll be pretty careful when he kicks off this time. Long ball, looking for Mace. Barrett's right there with him. Picked up by Hardy. For Hart. Barrett dives on top of it. Pretty untidy sort of football. Ball up will take place. Lift half forward. Just over the 15-minute mark, a point the difference, and the ball on the half forward line for South Fremantle, about 60 metres out. So the St Kilda defence under pressure. Finally, it's picked up by Smith. And there's a good mark to Grilicic. Oh, got one for his corner too. A great mark out there on that half forward line. Better to send them back into attack again. Only a point the difference. The kick is well up towards the full forward position now. Big fella got his hands with a go now. Uh, for, for the ball to be cleared away by Hodges. They're still under plenty of pressure as it comes out wide. Oh, they're throwing themselves at it. Tomei in the front posse here. Runs into trouble, gets a hand path, it's a bad one. Finally picked up by Gillies, ducks his head, but he's clear. Out there at half forward, kicks the ball up towards the forward pocket. The big fella flies, Edwards couldn't hold the mark. And still they take it away as it's finally driven up there by Cronin. Back there towards the centre of the ground. Down they go, left and right. 
And the ball pushed on by Fasoli. Over it goes to uh, Henwood. But he can't pick it up either because the pressure's too great. And there he is. Burns that great goal before. Clears the game. Looking for Fasini. He's got the mark. A hand pass coming out with a lock. It runs to an open goal. And he's put it through St Kilda at the front now. Seven points the difference now. 77 to 84 in favour of St Kilda. As South Fremantle now swing into attack. But the Saints looking the better side. Vagona at the back. Can he get boots the ball? No, it's touched through for one behind. One behind of the Bulldogs when they badly needed a goal, so it's 11-12 to 12-12, an even goal. As we wait for Piri this time to do the kicking in. He goes towards the member stand side, lead being made, ex-Tiger to ex-Tiger as Smith takes the mark, Smith at left half back. To centre field, Henwood goes the spoil, that's effective, to Cornell. It's a very high kick. Mace getting underneath the ball, so too is Morwood. Gillies is there, gets the rebound well. On it goes to Hardy. It's about his first kick since he got injured in the third quarter, and it's not a bad one either. Scores on level, it's a goal. What a game we've got here at BFL Park. Hardy putting it through for his first goal. Couldn't have come at a better time, Bob. No, and uh, I can only repeat once again, though, that Hardy obviously not 100% fit, and uh, he was doing a great job for his side early in the piece, but... Right now, another morale-lifting goal. I should mention that uh, should scores be level at full time, they do play extra time. I think it's first score wins after that. I think, uh, well, the siren won't sound if uh, scores are level when the actual uh, bell should go. Taken now by Matera. Down to right half forward for the Bulldogs again. Cronin. Long kick. Up the centre field, he's trying to find Burns, or who collides with his teammate out there. The hand pass comes out from Cowie. Cowie to Frawley at half forward. He's gone for a pass to Lockett. He can't get that one. Muir backs him up. So does Vashini. Right foot snap. Oh. A goal! What a gem by Silvio. Four goals to Silvio Vashini. And what a match we've got here at BFL Park. A goal the difference in favour of the Saints. Yes, and uh, he really can kick a miraculous goal, Vashini. <laughs> he's a marvel, isn't he? And, uh, he just seems to know where they snap and uh, great handball over to Frawley and Frawley's done very well since he's come onto the ground putting it down looking for Lockett over the back it comes and there's not many players who know where the goals are like Silvio Faschini. Well the difference now just over the 19 minute mark it's uh, uh, four points in a, a goal I should say in favour of St Gilda and it's Bird sending them back into attack again up there towards the full forward position. No one can take the mark. Still plenty of fumbling going on, but the umpire's found a free kick. It'll go there to, uh, let me see who's going to get the free kick. It'll be Lynch to take the free kick, a little shorter centre-half back. The ball back towards the centre of the ground. There's Burns on his own. He's played a great last quarter. Well, he's been pretty effective all night, but he's really lifted his game now as the ball goes out towards the half-forward line. Martin couldn't hold that one, hits the deck as a go now. And we see the ball shot up there by Cunningham, another goal to St Kilda! Just over the 20 minute mark, it's two goals, the difference in favour to St Kilda. They bounce back into attack again, up there towards the full forward position. It's knocked down, Lockett can't pick it up as a scramble out there, a long hand pass coming out wide. And finally we see the ball picked up by Edwards, it's a short kick. And it's Grittisic getting the ball out there, going for a short pass again. They've got to get it down there quickly, South Fremantle. Um, Amoroso couldn't pick it up, it's a bit of a, scrim a scrimmage going there, Burns again finally forces the ball out, plenty of messing about as Hart tries to get clear, oh. and down goes Burns, he's certainly throwing himself at the moment, and finally it's uh, Henwood coming out with a long kick, up there towards the full forward position, the pack fly, that's Hardy going up high, but well played by Peary that time, and he goes for the boundary line, and the ball is still in play, it won't go out, now it is, and it's about 45 to 50 metres around from the South Fremantle goal. St Kilda, 14-12, 96 to South Fremantle, 12-12, 84. And we're approaching the 21 and a half minute mark of this quarter. Still plenty of uh, handwork uh, going on there. Comes out to uh, Offiston, couldn't get clear. Narkles grabbed it and have the ball. Oh, no one making any progress. Kicked off the ground over to Doherty from Vagona. A long shot at goal. That's not a bad sort of a kick, guys. It's a boat! Oh, luck's not going South Fremantle's way at the moment. So it's 14, 12, 96 in Kilda. The South Fremantle, 12, 13, 85. 11 points the difference at VFL Park. Stephen Pirri looking for a lead at halfback. The 
favours the member stand side finally. Elphinson missed the mark. Rebounds to Gillies. He's gone for a short pass to Hardy, who marks right on the boundary line in the forward pocket. Well, Hardy's been fairly quiet since he got that knock midway through the third term. He's kicked one goal, and that was with his last kick. What's he done with this one? That's going close. Not close enough insofar as South Fremantle is concerned. Rushed through for one behind, and that makes the difference 10 points now. Still plenty of time for the Bulldogs to get up and win because we've been playing just on the 23-minute mark. 23 minutes gone. So if they're good enough, they can do it. But St Kilda looking the better side at the moment. That's kicked out without being touched. No, yes. Yes, it is. Hardy wasn't going to touch it and hoping that it did go out. It did. Short pass to Vagona is a shocker. Benny makes amends. No, he doesn't. Out it comes to Timay. Well caught by Hardy. Before Gillies can get there, the ball's over the boundary line and we'll see it thrown in about uh, 40 metres from the behind post. Still a real chance for the Bulldogs to get a goal here. Cowie in ruck. Knocked down by Dorotich, picked up by Mace. Mace high towards the half-back line and the mark on the chest taken by Henwood who decides to play on, albeit foolishly. Threw it, Pete. He thought he was clear, but he wasn't. Cowie takes the free kick. He's gone for a short pass. Burns, kick number 10 for the quarter. And that's not a bad sort of an effort. Capped off by that beautiful goal earlier, too. The rebound comes to Robbie Muir. The Saints are putting themselves in very well in this final term. Lynch goes for the hand pass to Martin. Not successful. Martin grab. A little bit of a... Well, there's nothing, really. And the free kick going to Martin. Just up from the back pocket. Time ticking away. 24 minutes gone now. Mace, a sitter. Mace at left centre wing. Taking plenty of time with the kick too. Now down to half forward. No mark. Picked up by Lane. He looked for Lockett. Lockett's got plenty of opposition from Carter. Can't outmark him from behind. Lynch comes in to try and assist. Tap back into play. Fashini comes out with it. The, the whistle has already gone. So bad luck for Silvio, who's already kicked four goals. Lockett has six for the Saints. They lead by ten points. And finally, it's Edwards. A long hand pass trying to find Lynch, who ran into Cornell. Now it's Hart. And the Bulldogs finally get clear. And we're just on the 25-minute mark. St Kilda in front by 10 points. Going through is Cronin, but he's up end of it. Still taps the ball back to Burns. And what a quarter this guy's played. That's a long kick, and that's, uh, that's the way they're winning this game now at the moment. Oh, well played. And we see bouncing on the ball is Lynch. Not a great kick, but it's finally marked out there by Barrett on the centre wing position. St Kilda, 96 points to South Fremantle, 86 points. 25 and a half minutes gone. And there's nearly a mark to Alfingston, but the umpire said no. Burns went into a uh, South Fremantle uh, guy, picked up by uh, Cronin, falls short. We saw uh, Frawley miss that one. Edwards is grabbed by Cowie, drops the ball, and uh, Cowie will get the free kick. Does, doesn't waste any time. Over to Tomei at centre half for a short pass to Lockett. Doesn't bounce quite right uh, for him to pick it up, but now he's got it. A left foot snap at the goal. Doesn't reach the distance, but it's okay for St Gilda. Uh, Daryl Cunningham's got it. Mel Brown on the fence, looking pretty uh, worried there at the moment, and so he should be because Daryl Cunningham looks like kicking this goal from about 12 metres out directly in front. And this will give them a lead of 16 points. 12-14-86 to 14-12-96 at the moment. Waiting on Cunningham. He's put it through for a goal. So it's 12-14-86 South Fremantle to St Kilda, 15-12-102. And I would say that just about fixed South Fremantle up, Bob. I would imagine so, Lou. We're one minute into, or almost two minutes into time on now. And uh, the great play of Greg Burns in this quarter. He was a consistent player up to this term. But uh, Lockett, a snap over the shoulder. And on the replay there, we saw Cunningham taking that mark. This is the man who's really swung the game. 102 to 86. Sterling Cup action from VFL Park. The Saints look to have the game in their keeping at the moment. And by so doing, will advance to the quarterfinals of this half million dollar competition. The money's always handy. So, ball up close to the circle. Henwood and Cowie.
Matera gathers it in well, shepherded well by Amoroso, down to full forward and a good mark taken by Big Borthwick. Borthwick 35 metres out directly in front of goal. I think time might beat the Bulldogs at the moment though. Oh. Towering punt kick by Borthwick is off target, through for one behind when they badly needed a goal. And that takes their score to 87 points. They trail by 15, 12-15 to 15-12 at the park. Elphinstone kicks the ball clear of hand and foot. Cowie and Henwood, the two number 20s clash. Barrett, he's a long way from his back pocket. Good tackle by Narkle. Fashini's there, picked up by Amoroso, who hooks it high towards full forward, and Borthwick again can't mark it one-handed. Cronin went without the ball. A chance for Vagoda, scooped out. Dorotic lost it. Good tackle by Mace. Down goes Smith, could have almost been in the back. It's picked up by Piri right on the boundary line. Back to Henwood and Cowie again, the two number 20s. That's a real wrestle out there. Finally won by Henwood, who tries to keep him at bay. Hooks it back to Cunningham and Burns. The latter wins it again. That's about his 12th kick for the quarter, Burns. And as Lou said, it has made the difference. Frawley well caught by Edwards when he played on. No free kick. Spooned into the open spaces. Jakovic gets it on to Edwards. Edwards a short pass to Vasoli. And standing on the mark, Terry Smith, long hand pass. And Hardy should put the Bulldogs long into attack, up towards full forward. Oh, Piri missed a setter. And the umpire will ball it up. And we're right at the, uh, just on the 29-minute mark. 87 plays, 102 in favour of St Kilda. So time running out for South Fremantle. It'll be a ball up about 20 metres out from their goal. Big Borthwick tried to grab that one, but a fumble. This sort of play suits St Kilda as we see Offenston take the ball back towards the centre of the ground. And there's a good mark taken by Cow. There's no doubt Burns has been the match winner for St Kilda tonight. He's had plenty of help for Pacini too. As we see picking up the ball is Hodges, but falls over. There's no one there for South Fremantle. Out to Narkel on the centre wing position. Goes for a pass. That's a beauty to Muir. Muir gets away, but he's slung to the ground by Martin. The umpire set on the ball against him. It was a good tackle by Martin that time. Yes, but no need to play on, Lou. Particularly no. the, the situation they're in at the moment. Well, they're 15 points in front, St Kilda. Got a clear run now as he sends the ball over the half-forward line. Coming back to Mace, he's grabbed by Dorotic, couldn't get clear. The umpire said he's grabbed him too high and Mace will take the free kick down there at half-back. So we're just on the 30-minute mark and there'll only be about a minute to go, I would say, and uh, that ball drops short and an easy mark taken there by Cowie. Over to Peary. Plenty of St Kilda players running loose out there on the wing position. He goes for the long kick, and they've certainly lifted the game since they started that style of play. Good mark by Edwards, down there towards the back pocket, back towards Samatera, and he's got the mark at centre-half back for uh, South Fremantle. It's away from Burns, by golly, he's been a dangerous... There's the siren to win the match, and St Kilda have won at 15-12-102, the South Fremantle 12-15-87, and as we said before, there's no doubt about it, Burns... Was the match winner, played a great game in that last quarter. Played pretty well all night, but he chopped it off with a match winning uh, effort. And of course, Fashini, a very uh, strong player all night too. Uh, Bob, yes. But uh, St Kilda changed their complete uh, game when they went long. They were messing about for two and a half, three quarters. And when they went direct at the goals with Burns in the centre, it certainly made the difference to their, to their uh, game here tonight. It's Brad Hardy uh, going off the ground uh, there now, uh, captain tonight of... Uh, South Fremantle, and it was bad luck for South Fremantle that Hardy did get injured. He was uh, a top player until his injury. He had to go down to the forward line. He still picked up uh, a couple of kicks and a nice goal, but the injuries to he and Vagona certainly did weaken the, uh, the strength of the side. Greg Burns, a great game by Burns. Uh, he absolutely dominated the game in the last quarter, but even up to that stage, uh, he'd had uh, around about uh, eight kicks and ten handballs, two, three-quarter time. But his, his last quarter certainly was a difference between the two sides. Uh, Lockett, uh, once again, showing how, what a fine player he is with six goals. And Silvio Fraschini, I would imagine, uh, has really put in a better game for the St Kilda side. All right, the final scores here at VFL Park. St Kilda advancing to the quarterfinals of the Sterling Cup. 15-12, 102 to South Fremantle, 12-15, 87. So the Saints victorious by, uh, what is it, 15 points. Good win to them, their first uh, 
Actually, I was going to say their first win of the year, but of course they had to play uh, an earlier round match in this competition. They defeated Queensland up in Brisbane, but they had to struggle up there too before they finally won through. So it's their second win of the year and a very handy one for them. OK, we'll take a break from VFL Park and we'll be back for further comment and our best on ground presentation in just a few moments. Great kicking by St Kilda in the final term when they added seven goals, one to the Bulldogs, three goals, six, and the major goal kickers for St Kilda. Lockett got six, Fashini four, Cunningham two, for South Fremantle, Bagona got four goals, and three each to Hart and Dorotich. Gentlemen, that brings us to our best player award of the night. Uh, Vasoli, 16 kicks, seven marks. Fashini, 17 kicks, two marks. Burns, 20 kicks, 10 marks. And Lockett, six goals, seven marks, nine kicks and two handballs. Uh, Bob and Lou, how did you sum it up? Well, there were plenty of good players on both sides, Bob, weren't there? And, uh, you know, Fashini played a great game and you've got to give full marks to Lockett, kicking six goals from a limited amount of opportunities in that first half. You couldn't fold Hardy's game until he got injured and I was very wrapped in Vagona and, uh, of course, uh, Vasoli was a pretty handy player too, but I'm going for Burns. I just think that... That last quarter effort, he played fairly well up until then, but that just topped off the game from my point of view. So I thought it was bad luck for South Fremantle that uh, both Hardy and Vagona suffered injuries. Vagona had kicked four goals to that date and uh, Hardy had played extremely well. And uh, the big fellow Dorotich at centre half forward and Fasoli and Hart around the packs that also did well. Lockett with his six goals, Fashini four goals and some good work around the ground. But the real match winner in the game, he'd uh, been a solid play up to three quarter time but it's not just for one quarter of football but Burns the match winner. Alright, uh, Burns to get the prize. Gentlemen and speaking of prizes, let's check what our best on ground wins and what our prize is for the player that plays the most outstanding game during the Sterling Cup series in 1984. The player of the match in tonight's Sterling Cup game will receive this superb portable hi-fi system, valued at around $400 from National Panasonic Consumer Electronics. The player of the series will win this rugged five-seater Nissan Patrol hardtop, which comes complete with air conditioning, power steering, tinted windows, taco and trip meter. New Nissan Patrol four-wheel drive for the ride of your life. City OK, Greg Burns to get the award and we'll be back to make that presentation to him in just a moment. Greg Burns, the winner of our National Panasonic Prize. Let's go down to the St Kilda dressing room now and here he is with Stephen Phillips. Thanks very much, Peter, and a very tired Greg Burns too. Your first match for four weeks. Yeah, it was a bit strange, but a uh, bit leg weary. Tell us about the last quarter. You really fired up. Um, was it anything Tony Jewell said to you or the runners when they ran out on the ground? Did they fire you up? Oh, yes. You know, I, th I think the last quarter always, he, he stated to us before the last quarter that, that uh, it does show your character, you know, and I just try to put in a little bit extra. Well, there are, we'll have a look at this goal here. Tell us what was going through your mind then when that sailed through. <laughs> oh, you know, just, just heading towards goal. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's just, that's it. 30 possessions for the match and it looked like half of them came in the last quarter when they really counted. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I did struggle early in the game. I had quite a few opponents and uh, trying to chase them around the field. But uh, after that, I, you know, I got my game together a little bit better. Has the morale been very low at the club? Oh, it has in the past few weeks. You know, we won't get carried away with that win. We've got a lot of hard work to do yet. But uh, we'll keep persevering. Well, you've taken a lot of money from Channel 7 over the past 12 months. Ten grand last year as the World of Sport added as award winner and tonight the National Award, and uh, I'm sure you'll put it to good use. Yeah, I'd just like to thank National. You know, they terrific prizes uh, during the year. Thanks very much. Greg, thanks very much, and we'll be back with Tony Jewell. Back to you, Peter. OK, thank you, Stephen. We'll take a break, and we'll be back to sign off in just a moment. Just before we close, Stephen Phillips has sought out uh, Saints coach Tony Jewell, and here he is. Tony, I'm just going to ask you one question. What's it feel like? I'm not sure, Steve. I haven't had it before. It's a long time since I have had it anyway. Uh, no, but it's good the boys, uh, boys hung in, so they deserved it. Yeah, they made it life very difficult for themselves. Oh, yeah, sure. But, you know, they hung in. That's the main thing. They tried hard, so you can't do much more than that. Well, I know they're going to celebrate, and uh, I'll let you go. I won't be celebrating too hard. <laughs> Back to you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Uh, Schoolboys uh, results tonight in the curtain raiser game here at VFL Park. Mount Lilydale 59 going down to St Bernard's 93. Match next Tuesday night in the Sterling Cup, Geelong versus Carlton. You'll see that live at half past eight. Saturday, a big round of matches coming up. 
out here. Hawthorne play Richmond for $10,000 in a winner-take-all game from Channel 7. Carlton play St Kilda. Collingwood play North Melbourne. Fitzroy play Essendon. Footscray play the Swans. And Melbourne tackle Geelong. On Sunday, the game is Collingwood versus North Melbourne in the Channel 7 Reserves Cup, live from the Lake Oval straight after World of Sport. And there's a seven sports special. Don't forget the Warrnambool Grand Annual. The uh, greatest steeplechase in Australia, 33 fences. A great spectacle. You'll see it live on Channel 7 from 2 o'clock on Thursday. Hope you enjoyed the match tonight. A big week of sport on behalf of uh, Lou Richards, Bob Skelton, Jack Edwards and Stephen Phillips, our director, off Potter and crew. Good night to you all.